This is WFYI News Now. It's September 5th, and I'm Abriana Heron. On today's show, a critical blood shortage in the country, especially for ethnic and racial minorities. Activists in Northwest Indiana where U.S. Steel and Gary use plastic pellets in its steelmaking process. And we have a feature story on how colleges are adjusting to a controversial new law that requires intellectual diversity in the classroom. We want this campus to be a place where academic freedom is a real thing, a place where racial diversity and other kinds of diversity is both welcome and honored. Those stories are coming up. But first, work on a new downtown bridge project is expected to start this week. The Henry Street Bridge will span the White River and connect neighborhoods through a city and state agreement that includes the new Elanco headquarters. The bridge will feature large, lighted rings encircling it and an expansion of the cultural trail. A one-acre site on the east side of the bridge project is involved in an archaeological excavation effort. Recent development and community involvement revealed hundreds of remains from the city's first cemetery are still likely on the site. The Department of Public Works advises that numerous street closures and detours are expected in the area. There is a critical blood shortage in the U.S., especially for ethnic and racial minorities. As WFYI's Fara Usury reports, less than 1% of blood donors in Indiana are Black. Some patients rely on regular blood transfusions. That includes people with cancer, anemia, and genetic blood disorders such as sickle cell disease. For these patients, it's critical that the blood comes from a donor of a similar ethnicity. That's because the letter type of the blood, A, B, or AB, is not the only thing that matters. There's also the combination of antigens found on blood cells. Patients are more likely to find the best match in a pool of donors from the same ethnicity. Otherwise, patients may suffer serious reactions. Innovative Hematology and Versity Indiana Blood Center are hosting a minority blood drive on Saturday, September 21, at the Greater Northwest Baptist Church on 62nd Street. I'm Farah Yusri. Activists in Northwest Indiana worry U.S. Steel and Gary could use plastic pellets in its steelmaking process, further polluting an already overburdened community. Indiana Public Broadcasting's Rebecca Thiel reports the U.S. Department of Energy intends to give the company making the pellets a more than $180 million loan. International recycling group Erie's recycling facility in Pennsylvania would make plastic pellets to replace coke in steel blast furnaces, which generate a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. Neither the agency nor the company would confirm which Northwest Indiana steelmaker would use the pellets. Doreen Carey is the president of GARD, Gary Advocates for Responsible Development. She worries using the plastic would release hazardous chemicals into the air and storing it would be a fire hazard. Plastics is a huge problem for our country, but burning them in an environmental justice community that's already impacted by 100 years of pollution is not going to be the solution. The DOE says IRG Erie would have to meet certain conditions to get the loan, including an environmental review and a community benefits plan. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Rebecca Thiel. Activists in Northwest Indiana say, instead, U.S. Steel should explore climate-friendly options, like direct reduced iron and powering the plant with renewable energy. And for our final story today. College students are back to school with the controversial new law in place. Senate Enrolled Act 202 requires intellectual diversity in the classroom, and it carries stern potential penalties for professors. Higher education reporter Aubrey Wright has more on how colleges are adjusting. It was just before midnight. A small group of students and faculty held a candlelight vigil into the early hours of Monday at Indiana University's Sample Gates. Professor Ben Robinson, one of the organizers, said they were mourning and protesting the loss of free speech. To mark on the very first day of school, uh, to mark our determination that the speech that we cherish won't won't die. The vigil ended peacefully. A few hours later, classes were in session. Protesters took aim at a new IU policy by gathering defiantly after an 11 p.m. cutoff for expressive activity. But the group said it had another reason to mourn. 
Senate Enrolled Act 202. This is Professor Heather Aku. We want this campus to be a place where academic freedom is a real thing. A place where racial diversity and other kinds of diversity is both welcome and honored. Governor Eric Holcomb signed SEA 202 into law last spring. It requires faculty to teach, quote, intellectually diverse ideas in the classroom. If they don't, their tenure could be in jeopardy. The law also sets up a complaint process so faculty could be reported. Diversity, equity, and inclusion programs also must support intellectual diversity. Indiana State Senator Spencer Deary wrote the policy. You know, every university is different. And so we, we intentionally um, gave some mandates, but left them a little bit open-ended to allow that flexibility. SEA 202's language is vague. Deary says it's supposed to strengthen debate on campus. Some of these misconceptions out there that, oh, we need to teach the other side of, of this issue when the other side is clearly ridiculous, there, there's no mandate to do that. Boards of trustees will decide how their schools follow the law. The bill didn't really create any new powers the board of, the trustees didn't already have. It simply tried to give them a little bit of nudge towards the right direction. Academics pushed hard against the legislation, saying this kind of political interference will lead to censorship and surveillance. Faculty members in this report can only speak for themselves, and they don't represent their universities. Here's Purdue University professor Stephanie Masta. Like, nobody wants to be an example, but somebody will be an example. Masta is worried about how this law will be enforced, because it could be weaponized against certain professors or topics. I already have colleagues who are self-censoring. According to Purdue University's interim policy, complaints about intellectual diversity are sent to HR. I do think to some to some degree that's going to be a detriment to the students because again we're experts in our research. Like Purdue IU is adopting an interim policy. Meanwhile, lawyers and faculty leaders are working on long-term changes. IU's guidance says course content doesn't need to be changed. How is this going to be implemented? And we don't know yet because it has not been. That was IU Law Professor Emeritus Alex Tanford. Tanford says there's no need for panic yet. Faculty reviews are already in place. The boards of trustees have always had authority over the university. And faculty are already sharing many ideas in the classroom. But Tanford says faculty don't trust their leaders. But again, that's fear. It's not reality yet. Indiana State University is also sorting things out. Professor Lindsay Eberman testified when the bill was being developed. And I think the hard part for us was that this bill assumed that we were already incapable of doing our work. Eberman says Indiana State's trustees passed a policy highlighting the university's strengths, including everyone's opinion in the classroom and having evidence-based evaluations. She says lawmakers and education leaders in the state want the same thing, students succeeding and earning valuable degrees. We just need to make sure that our legislation and our policy are in alignment with those ambitions. And she helps shape Indiana State's policy. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Aubrey Wright. And that's all for today's episode of WFYI News Now. Our podcast is produced by Drew Dodlin, with support from the news team at WFYI and public media journalists across the state. Our news director is Sarah Neil Estes. Kendall Antron produced our music. And I'm your host, Abriana Heron. If you liked today's episode, remember to subscribe and share. And follow WFYI on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube to check in on our newsroom throughout the day. Thanks for listening. We'll be back tomorrow.